okay, we're here at Focus Interactive seeing active aggression, which I feel is a bit of an ironic name, given that during the presentation you've talked about how you want to go back to the more sort of slow build of an RTS. Uh, yes, and uh, yeah, I understand what you mean. Uh, um, yeah, we want to. In fact, we want to have the uh, the pace uh, of you know act of war or uh, CNC generals or you know uh, something where it is a mix between something that is really involving. You know, you are into your game. You have a lot of things to do. It's not only watching, and something where you can think. You know, and and make decision and saying, oh, to win, I should do this and this, and it's not only, okay, I know that I should be doing this, but it just like, I'm not speed and I'm not fast enough. Let's just ask, that that has become the nature of the RTS these days. That sort of very fast Twitch-based gameplay. Just uh, from your own personal opinion, why why do you think it's went that way? I mean, is that just being a natural progression for the series? Are for the genre, and at this point, we've taken stock and went, "Oh, hang on, everything's just being sped up." Yeah, well, to be honest, I don't know. I think, uh, but the, uh, probably because the the last one, the last big um, uh, RTS, is StarCraft Two, yeah. and uh, you, you know, we don't have any more uh, some age of uh, something uh, coming around. Um, some new thing, I mean, like like refreshing and you know, Age of Empire, Age of Kings, uh, were a more slow pace and they were extremely popular. And uh, I think the Command and Conquer series were more in between. And uh, but the two of them kind of disappeared, you know. So now the the only one that exists is Starcraft, which is as a higher pace. So. Uh, well, to me, in my opinion, it's I, I will I will uh, say it maybe in a very egoistic, um, egoist uh, way. I'm creating games that I like because I want to play them. Yeah. So uh, I uh, I really like you know the the, the, the CNC especially the generals CNC generals uh, pace, uh, and this is where we want to uh, wh what we want to bring. We want to bring this kind of pace where it is uh, exciting and going like. Very smooth, but also uh, uh, where you you can think. Well, that's it. I mean, do you guys have? Do yourself have like a whiteboard at the studio? Going things we need to achieve: A, B, C. These are these are the core systems of the game. Oh, uh, to me, well, I would say the core system is to have something that could be very fun and interesting when you, ha you when you build your base. So that's why you know with active progression. Uh, you know, you, you cannot. You, you you have your HQ, and you build around your HQ. If, and if you want to build somewhere else on the map, you need to build another HQ, which means that this way of building your base is going to be, um, to me, unique. So you are uh, uh, bringing something to the players that is new and it can experience. And uh, it's not like oh, I used to play this game already. I don't want to uh, to experience uh, again something that I've always uh, already played. And secondly, is how you will deal with the resource management. It's what what are the ideas that you can bring to make it, you know, like different, uh, fresh, and stuff like this. And then you have well, production, producing units is more about how you for each faction, how you design the faction. And this is really fun to do because you pick up units. And say, oh, this faction is going to be fun to play because these defense you can use it this way or this way, and, and these are the pro and the cons. Uh, and of course the combat system. You're saying about that, about your units. Um, it's US Armed Forces versus is it Cartel? Oh yeah, uh, well the first one I would say the, the more classical one is the US. So the US Army in the 2020s. So imagine the US Army like in uh, 2000, yeah in 10 years, how it will look like. So there are some cool devices and uh, weaponry are pretty, uh, pretty funny. Uh, but it's pretty straightforward. You, you know most of those uh, units, and then you have the uh, Chimera. So the Chimera is a is a UN uh, undercover UN uh, uh, military, uh, uh, you know, special forces, and he's using weaponry coming from all around uh, the world, uh, like strange, kind of unique, and it's fun. And you have the cartel. 
then the cartel is using you know like a highest prototype is everything is really expensive and they have technology that is uh, uh, more science fiction than the other one it's a lot of things that are still new way of uh, new kind of weapons and stuff like this we're saying about that perhaps less so with the 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 lagger two factions there but more so with the u.s armed forces obviously the design work uh, behind something like that, um, we, we've seen it so many times in various mediums as well as RTSs. Um, so when you're sort of pulling upon that idea, how do you make sure, I mean, how do you go about making your version of what the US Armed Forces would look like distinct from the competition? If you, if you take it like, for example, an RTS, <clears throat> usually is how, imagine that you, you have no artistic direction that you want to put on it is, how well is executed the tank? You know, like for example, the Abrams, and how many polygons can you have, and how many kind of shaders is your engine is able to to make? So this is the first step: is if you see uh, the tank, is saying is saying like it's um, better executed than the competition. And secondly, is well, how how would you like to that to make? the player feels when he plays with the tank. So for example, what we wanted to have with the US Army is have the feeling that uh, it's something that is very resilient. They used to make war, you know, they have a, a but it's, it's not, you know, like uh, super high tech. It's like, but you know, very strong. This is the way we wanted to have and have some geeky things like, uh, you know, on our Abrams tank, it is written born to kill, you know, like, a tough guy. It's fun to play with those guys. Say, when, the, when you select the tank, he's talking like this, and uh, so we add a lot of things. Uh, but it, it, it is uh, like I was saying. You can also express it by you know the acnos. You know, with the sun when you select the unit, what he's telling to, telling to you, and uh, this can be fun too. With the uh, the field of view. Um, that your various units will see while they're exploring the landscape. I, I think you sort of touched upon it in the presentation about buildings or hills or stuff like that. Everything will be blocked until you have that clear line of sight. It's not the player can see a sort of circumference around the units, it's what the unit can see. Is that something that you guys have sort of implemented from the start, the idea that it's always the unit comes first almost? Uh, well, this uh, line of sight system that is uh, pretty, uh, I would say, pretty accurate with uh, the buildings, all this stuff like this. Well, we've we've done a lot of work on a previous game with uh, War Game, which all line of sight are even more complex. We don't want the game to be too complex and in act of aggression, but it, we had um, a great knowledge. So, but we thought it was really fun to have those um, different height. And if you put your infantry unit in a building, we'll go at the, the roof and say, oh, I see everything now. And this is why it's fun to use the helicopters to, uh, uh, to have the, the great uh, point of view and stuff like this. So just talk us through briefly. Um, I pick up the game. What have I got access to when I pick up the game? Single player campaign, multiplayer, how, how does it come together? What's the structure? Uh, so you will have two, uh, two uh, single player campaigns. One where you play the good guys, one where you play the bad guys. And during those two campaigns, you will use all the three factions and learn how to use them in an increasingly complex uh, mission and difficulty. So we like when, uh, to make our games a little bit uh, hard to play, but you will be able to, uh, to lower the difficulty. But I like, you know, those uh, old style game where it was kind of difficult. Uh, you will have multiplayer modes up to 40 players at the same time. So you will have one versus one, two versus two with different modes, uh, free for all, a uh, uh, lot of things like this with a lot of different maps. And the, the great thing regarding the uh, amount of players is w when you play one versus one map, it's a, a very small one, kind of an in intimistic map. And when you play on the 40 players at the same time map, it's like a huge mess. It's a huge map, everything is, so you can really have a different uh, experience. We also have the skirmish, uh, and we have the. Uh, we like to support the games. When the, uh, for example, with War Game, we were very uh, supporting the game, adding uh, more content after the release, uh, uh, patching the game for uh, tuning and stuff like this. 
and uh, well, also with active aggression, we'll have uh, the ladder system. You know, competitive playing uh, with uh, arranged teams or one versus one and stuff like this. Okay, sort of wrapping up then. When can people play this? How can they play it? Where can they play it? So we hope the game will be released around March, uh, and you will be able to play it on PC. Uh, where on your PC uh, and <laughs> PC? Yeah, I think it's going to be PC, Mac, and Linux because now we are PC, Mac, and Linux for our three years ago now. So it's going to be delivery on those two platforms too. Awesome. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk. Thank you very much. Oh,